Finally, a step-by-step -step approach to interpreting a breast MRI. While every breast imaging facility uses a slightly different MRI protocol, utilizing the following checklist approach will ensure that you're performing high quality reads. The first thing to look at is the localizer sequence and the CAD MIP image. This provides an overview. Next, move on to looking at an, any axial non-fat saturated T1 weighted images if available. From there, move on to the dynamic sequence with a fat saturated T1 pre-contrast followed by the sequential phase one, two, and three post-contrast images. From there, move on to the sagittal high-resolution post-contrast sequence, then axial subtraction images, and lastly, axial stir images. The Scout Localizer sequence warrants a quick review on this sequence which is primarily used to aid the technologist in positioning the patient you also want to check the positioning make sure that the breast is centered within the coil make sure that the nipple is positioned in the center and that there are no obvious skin folds or artifacts also take a quick glance at the surrounding structures to make sure that there's not any incidental findings occasionally you'll come across a large lung mass a spine abnormality or an abdominal mass that only shows up on the localizer images they're rare, but certainly important. Next, look at the maximum intensity projection image. This image created by the CAD software gives a great overview of both breasts. It also helps you to evaluate and ensure that contrast was administered and allows you to evaluate the background enhancement. With this sequence, which you can scroll through and look at at any angle, you're looking for any enhancing lesion and if there are enhancing lesions or known malignancies, this sequence is very beneficial to evaluate for extensive disease or look at the relation of the malignancy to the nipple and pectoralis. If there is no enhancement on the MIP image, but contrast was administered, you are almost done. You can feel quite confident that the study will be normal. The axial non-fat saturated T1 weighted pre-contrast image, you're looking for technical quality is the entire breast image and is the nipple straight if the nipples are not pointing forward it can make determining the exact location of an abnormality very difficult as the anatomy gets distorted also on the non-fat saturated image look for the size and symmetry of the breasts look for any prior surgery or implants or biopsy clips as susceptibility artifact is highlighted on this non-fat saturated sequence use the axial fat saturated T1 pre-contrast image to again assess technical quality looking for uniformity of fat saturation. Next look at the symmetry and size of the breasts and whether there's any prior surgery or breast implants. And lastly anything that's bright on the pre-contrast image. This could include protonaceous cysts or dilated ducts. In general structures that are bright pre-contrast are not worrisome. Moving on to the post-contrast sequences first thing you want to do is assess that it was actually administered and that the IV did not infiltrate. Next, check for motion artifact. Quickly clicking between the different phases allows you to see if the patient was moving during the exam. This will limit kinetic analysis and subtraction images. Next, evaluate the amount of background enhancement. The categories are minimal, mild, moderate, or marked background enhancement. Remember, this is different than the amount of fibroglandular tissue. Finally, evaluate for any enhancing lesions. You're looking for a mass, non-mass enhancement, or a focus of enhancement. Scroll through the peak phase sequence. Usually the phase two or second sequence, scroll back and forth, up and down throughout the right breast, and then up and down throughout the right breast with the color map on. Then repeat the same thing for the left breast. This will ensure that you don't miss any subtle enhancing lesions. On the sagittal high resolution post contrast images, evaluate for enhancing lesions, looking for masses, non-mass enhancement, and foci of enhancement. The sagittal images are particularly important because most MRI guided breast biopsies are performed using the sagittal projection. 
The sagittal images are also particularly good for evaluating the sternum and axilla. Use this sequence to look at the extent of disease and relationship of the malignancy to the nipple or chest wall. For any enhancing lesion that is identified on a breast MRI, evaluate the following characteristics. The lesion type, is it a focus, a mass, or non-mass enhancement? The location, what quadrant is it in, and what is the depth, anterior, middle, or posterior? What are the margins if it is a mass? What is the internal enhancement? Is it homogeneous or heterogeneous? The distribution, if it's non-mass enhancement, is it segmental, regional, focal? Then evaluate the enhancement kinetics, progressive, plateau, or washout enhancement. Or maybe it's very minimal enhancement that's below threshold for kinetic analysis. Is the lesion T2 bright? And finally, any associated features. Is there skin or nipple involvement? Does it contain fat on the non-fat saturated sequence? What are the diffusion characteristics if DWI sequences were performed? Moving on to the axial subtraction sequences, look for any enhancing lesions you may have missed. Some people like to use the subtraction sequence up front. However, another approach is to use it at the end as a final check to ensure that you didn't miss anything. Remember, subtraction images are highly dependent on patient motion. On the axial stir, you're looking for any T2 bright spots. These could be cysts, masses, fluid collections, or edema. Also, the T2 weighted or stir images are very good for evaluating lymph nodes. Look at the size and symmetry, look in the axilla, but also in the internal mammary region. Finally, on the stir sequence, look for any bright spots that aren't in the breast. Occasionally, you'll find neck masses like in large lymph nodes or thyroid masses. You may find an abnormality in the chest, rib fractures or rib metastases, lung masses, pleural effusions, mediastinal masses are all quite common. Or in the abdomen, you may find a liver lesion, a fluid collection, or any other mass. When interpreting a breast MRI, the most important thing is to develop a search pattern and do it the same way every time. Thank you for watching. Please click subscribe to see more of our content or go to mammoguide.com to learn more about breast imaging.